so about five months ago, TEDx Maitiga reached out to me and said this was the opportunity to speak in front of an amazing crowd. Um, and they mentioned the theme was radical reframe. Can anyone guess what I did next? Well, I Googled. <laughs> I Googled what radical reframe meant. Uh, after some Googling with uh, a colleague of mine who's right here, Swati, uh, we concluded that this to us meant reinventing yourself time and again. Why is it important and how do I do it? So reinventing yourself to me means changing and growing and learning in a constant basis. How do I do it? Throughout my life, I've been open to ideas, I've explored a lot of things, learned, built myself, built on my strengths, overcome my fears, and so on. So I'm gonna walk you through my journey as I've done this. I'll also remind you that if I didn't reinvent myself time and again, Today, I would have been a horrible engineer, stuck in a miserable relationship, unable to take care of my mental health, and struggling on a regular basis because everything that is outside of my control would stress me out. Would any of you want to be that? I hope not. All right, so um, I'm just going to walk you through my childhood. I was born in a middle-class family in Kathmandu. My dad worked for Khadya Sastan, if you know what that is. Uh, he made, I think, an average salary of 5,000 rupees per month, so pretty basic. My mom was a homemaker. And as a child, I traveled and lived across Nepal from east to west. And some were really remote areas like Fidim Pastor, Chaurdhari, and Katari. Throughout this phase, what I realized was what I had was a lot more than what other people had. I felt very fortunate for the access that I had to anything from education to extracurricular activities. So as a child and as a student, I made the most of it. I was second in class. I would participate in anything and everything that was open to me. By anything, I mean table tennis, badminton, uh, basketball, spelling contest, quiz contest, you name it. If there was a competition in school, I would be there. Um, in this process, was I good at everything? No. I remember this one time when I signed up for extempore speech. If you don't know what that means, you get the topic right before you speak. My topic was friendship, which seems pretty easy to talk about, right? Um, well, I went in front of the stage I was very nervous. All I could get through in terms of speaking is good afternoon, everyone. And I said, thank you, and I left. <laughs> so I, I hope I've come a long way from that. Um, so just wanted to point out that you know, throughout my childhood, I've explored different things. I wasn't great at everything, but I just kept at it um, because I wanted to stretch myself and keep on learning. So after my SLC, I went to one of the most prestigious schools in Nepal, St. Davis campus, for my IAC. Guess what happened there? I failed my board exams in multiple subjects. At the time, I understood that I failed because I didn't study. What I didn't understand then is why I didn't study. It wasn't until later in life, when I went to the US to pursue my undergrad, when I reflected and realized that I was just doing ISC because that was expected of someone who was a good student after SLC. You didn't get a chance to explore and figure out what, what you really wanted to do after SLC. So this is my move to the US. You can laugh at the picture if you want. Um, so I went to the US, I started my undergrad thinking that I would major in math and physics and eventually become an engineer that I talked about before. However, I'm thankful to the US education system that kind of expands your horizon a little bit and uh, allows you to explore different subjects. So during my freshman year, which is the first year, 
I explored anything from English literature to psychology, uh, along with math and physics that I went to study. During that process, I ran into economics, and I fell in love with it. I realized that I had been applying a lot of concepts from economics, like opportunity cost, without actually knowing the term. So I was in a conflict. Here I was, I thought I was going to be an engineer, but I'm really in love with economics. So after mulling over it, after taking more classes, talking to some of my mentors and advisors in school, I decided to switch my major from physics to economics. I still kept my math major. A lot of times during uh, the course of my undergrad, people would ask me, why math? Why economics? Why not IT or engineering that has more scope in the US to get a job? To me, that was weird because I never operated that way. I went with my gut feeling. I knew what I enjoyed, and I just stuck to it. So I graduated with honors. Uh, after my undergrad, there's no pictures, by the way, after this. <laughs> um, so after my undergrad, I was very lost. Some of you probably have five-year plan, 10-year plan. I've never operated that way. If today you ask me what five years from now, I have no idea. Um, so after undergrad, I was very lost. I didn't know if I wanted to work, if I wanted to do PhD. Um, so I just went with my gut feeling and, and kind of just experimented a little bit. So during, uh, during the OPT, which is one year that you get after your undergrad in the US to uh, kind of do some training without having to commit to a work visa or student visa, I decided to join a company as an analyst. I hated it. Here I was graduating with math and economics, and I thought I was going to change the world. And I was just sitting in front of a computer entering airline contracts into a system. After a few months, though, I gave it a chance and started seeing the bigger picture of what the organization was trying to do, what the department was trying to do, and I developed interest in the corporate sector in general. So I banked on my analytical skills that I was already strong in and started developing some of the newer skills like product management, program management, project, project management, client communication, negotiations, and so on. During my time at the company, I also found really good mentors who were able to na help me navigate within the company and also guide me to understand that to bridge the gaps that I had uh, when it came to some of the technical knowledge uh, for things like finance or marketing, it would be better if I did an MBA. So I started doing part-time MBA while I was working full-time for the company. After I completed my MBA, it was clear to me that while I was able to explore different areas within the company that I was working for at the time, I wanted to stretch myself and work for one of the big tech companies in, in the world. So after that, I moved to Seattle to work for Amazon, where I spent about five and a half years working in various departments again. I remember the first few weeks, I was pathetic. I was, I was very nervous just looking around the room and seeing people from really good schools. They had gone to Harvard, Stanford, when I had not. So I think I developed a lot of self-doubt and started questioning myself. And it got to a point where I think it was my fifth week when I went home and I had a major meltdown. I thought I was going to get fired any day because I thought I wasn't competent enough. So then. After a bit of crying, I decided to map out different segments of, of my role at the time and figure out what are the segments that are causing the anxiety the most. I identified that two reasons were the main ones that were causing anxiety. One was clarity of the role at the time. So I, I was a vendor manager at the time, and there were other roles uh, like in-stock managers. I just wasn't sure about where the line was supposed to be drawn, and I was trying to achieve everything, which wasn't possible. 
The second was there were a lot of new tools at Amazon that I wasn't used to. So I understood that these were the two things that I wanted to work on and fix in order to get over my anxiety and focus on uh, business development. So I worked uh, with some of my colleagues, reached out to some of my mentors, did a lot of online training to bridge that gap. And as a result, after my 90 days at Amazon, my manager's only 90 day review feedback was that he was worried I was gonna be burnt out from working too much. So as I said, um, I've ventured into different uh, functions within Amazon as well. Uh, towards the end of my uh, journey at Amazon, I established Amazon retail in countries like Sweden, Poland, uh, Saudi Arabia, and Egypt. My point here is throughout my career, I have ventured into different roles, different departments, different companies, different majors. Had I not done that, I wouldn't know what I'm good at and what I enjoy. I am good at building relationships and people management, and it comes from my strong sense of empathy. I am good at building things from ground up because I enjoy ambiguity and building structures around it. These are things I would not have known about myself had I stuck to the same role, same major, same department, and same company. Now I'm gonna venture out a little bit into a personal journey, my divorce. I was 21 when I fell in love with someone and I was in that relationship for almost 13 years. I had been so busy and so focused on my career, I didn't even realize that my relationship had fallen apart. So in 2018, when I realized this, I was at the time at Amazon in Seattle, I was devastated. I believed that hard work could fix everything, and here I was sta staring at my relationship that no matter how hard I worked, I couldn't fix it. It brought back a lot of questions to myself. So now I started to explore again, and this time the exploration was more inside me. So I did therapy for three years where on a weekly basis, I was speaking my mind out. And then I also went to Vipassana, where for 10 days I didn't speak at all. During this process, one of the learnings I had is that not everything is in your control. And there's a lot of power in letting go. At the time, I wasn't ready to accept my failure and let go of the relationship that wasn't working. But after three years of therapy and vipassana and so on, I realized it was time. So I let go of the relationship that wasn't working for me. So now I'm gonna take you to my journey back to Nepal. Um, I was at Amazon, had been working for five and a half years. I had a clear career trajectory. But deep inside, I was asking, is this it? I can keep moving up the ladder, keep making more money, get more responsibility, but is this it? I've always believed in having a bigger impact and big, bigger role in building this world, and I didn't think I was quite doing it. So I had started venturing into uh, coffee chatting with organizations like Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation that was also based in Seattle, just when Daraz reached out to me for this managing director role. It seemed like the perfect next step for me to come back build an e-commerce company for Nepal and work with my community. So I hopped on a plane and came back to Nepal. Well, hopped on a few planes. Um, so what does my life look like today? I am heading a company with more than 700 employees. I had never done this before. It's challenging, but it's very rewarding. I had also never done a TED talk. I still have stage fright. You have no idea. <laughs> I've had at least two weeks of sleepless nights just thinking about being up here and speaking in front of you all. But that doesn't stop me from doing this. <laughs> I've developed a strong sense of understanding on why I want to do things and keep pushing myself to do it. 
To conclude, I want to leave you with a term called anicca. In Vipassana, I learned about this term that means nothing is permanent. If nothing is permanent, we are not either. We evolve every day, every hour, every minute, every second. So accepting that change is the only constant, opening up to new ideas, exploring, learning, and building yourself is all you can do. Thank you.